Thank you for joining us for another This Month in Datadog. My name is Jeremy, and I'm the Director of Technical Community and Open Source. As always, we'll update you on our latest products, feature announcements, events, and more. And speaking of events, we're recording this at Datadog Summit in Denver. And now, This Month in Datadog, April 2022. We're adding major updates to our detection capabilities. We can now detect attacks and suspicious behavior across the network events. How can we avoid shipping bugs, security issues um, into production? By detecting them earlier in the software development lifecycle. We uh, at Datadog are building a real-time service catalog that's built on top of the service topology and real-time performance metrics. I'm here to talk to you today about how you can build a modern compliance strategy for your observability data, specifically how you can use Datadog's robust tools for sensitive data management. At Datadog, we've been partnering with Amazon Mutual customers since they started building up serverless to get, uh, provide this kind of first-class visibility into these serverless technologies. If we are able to monitor successfully Cornelius using Datadog, other customers will be able to do as well. The idea here is to give you some of the decisions that we made over the years on how we run Kubernetes. And now I'm excited to introduce you to the next step in our evolution of Live Containers with our new feature called the Related Resources Map, which gives you a real-time view into the relationships between your actual Kubernetes resources. I'm here to talk a bit about how uh, Datadog's APM suite, a pretty wide array of products, can help make remediation faster. That was just a sneak peek of the many great presentations we had during Datadog Summit Denver. Watch the full presentations in the Datadog Summit Denver playlist on our YouTube channel. We've also released a ton of new features. Subscribe to our newsletter or the new in-app RSS feed to stay updated. This month, I'm excited to introduce you to a brand new detection type in the Cloud Sim platform, Impossible Travel. Over the years, detection engineers have worked hard to manually enrich IPs with geolocation information and alert on user activity that has a large distance between multiple locations in a very short period of time. From a threat detection perspective, that can mean that you have a compromised account or you flew faster than a number of famous superheroes. We didn't just implement an algorithm, though, that might generate false positives. If your users use VPNs or move between different cell towers, we can detect this with a feature called baseline user locations. Datadog uses this feature to determine what normal user behavior looks like before generating security signals. Security breaches are on the rise due to compromised credentials. In this signal, we can see that Lewis Miller has logged in from Finland and the United States in a very short period of time. Let's start investigating this signal. As you can see, the timestamp is the same for both locations, and the detection has been able to identify the city and ISP name. The signal even links to the actual AWS CloudTrail log that captured the suspicious login activity in the first place. Because Datadog unifies security and observability, each security signal is accompanied by rich context about the associated users and entities. The Rule Details section describes why the signal was triggered, as well as what should be done in response. Additionally, you can add suppressions to prevent the impossible detection rule from triggering for specific users or resources. From here, you can investigate contributed logs, related signals, or perform actions such as signal triage. However you choose to implement this, we think that impossible travel will be an awesome addition to your arsenal of detections. For more information, check out the link on screen to give impossible travel detection a try.
Hello everyone, we are here in Denver for the Datadoc Summit and we're having a lot of fun uh, learning from the, from the companies who are using Datadoc here in Colorado. And today I'm here with Brian Lucky uh, from Kanji to tell us a little bit more about uh, how his, his career and uh, how they're using Datadoc today. One of the things that I always worry about, uh, we are trying to, as a platform team, trying to make our developers' lives easier, trying to create these abstractions for them so they can build on top. Um, uh, but at the same time, this DevOps mentality where they, the, the developer engineers are going to, to be the ones owning the services in production. So how do you balance out um, making their lives easier to push code to production uh, without hiding the details that they may need when they have an outage in production and they need to deal with infra uh, at that point. Absolutely, so I like to call it ownership with support. We say ownership a lot, but it's not like the teams go away. We're here to assist those teams. Um, but I think the way you start is you work directly with the developers to see what kind of information that they do need. Uh, realistically, most of what they need to troubleshoot should be in Datadog or whatever your observability platform is. If it's not, how can we get it there? How can we uh, sur uh, surface the visibility to them? And I think it's also being available to them. We're, uh, we have a Slack integration to escalate to, in to infrastructure if they ever run into a problem. Uh, so they can reach out to us, we help them. And then we do a post-mortem where we figure out, is this a thing we can open up to them in the future so that they don't need us? So every time that we're called in, every time that we're paged, uh, we think about about what could we do to not have to have a person respond in the future. Sometimes there's nothing, right? Um, but a lot of times there is something you could do to improve it. A lot of it is uh, you should really be able to observe and understand your infrastructure and your applications in Datadog if you're using all the features that are in there. That's, that's our level one. And then beyond that, it's just a continuous feedback loop with, with the development teams to try to um, make sure they have what they need, um, but also work with security to make sure they don't have more than they should. <laughs> makes sense and, and I like what you say that part of the postmortem is to figure out um, what was missing why why maybe they why they reach out to, to your team um, but also what what type of information they were missing so you can build new dashboards or expose new metrics so, so they, they, they can improve the next time that they have an outage. And sometimes what they were missing is knowledge of how to troubleshoot that thing. So you come out of that postmortem and you do a brown bag on that specific, troubleshooting that specific type of problem, right? To try to grow that experience. A lot of times the information might have been in Datadog, but they weren't able to understand exactly what they were seeing. So it's not just opening up the underlying tools. It's like helping them level up their knowledge of, of the troubleshooting as well. So thanks very much, Brian, for sharing your knowledge. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you um, on site, uh, but also here in this interview for uh, this month in Datadog. Uh, so back to you, Jeremy. That wraps up another This Month in Datadog. If you have a comment or question, email us. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for future episodes of This Month in Datadog. It was so good to see some of you in person. It really was energizing, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>